Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, hello again. So you take one week off and you begin how to run the show. And we didn't tell you that we have named the show RVing with John DePietro. So, well, no, I, everybody, I for one week I lose all control. My name is John DePietro. Welcome to RV John DePietro, RVing with John DePietro. And I have a uh, co host for this week only. His name is Bob Zagami. Uh, Bob, tell us a little bit about. Uh, about where you were last week when you turned the show over to me. And as Dante would say, as Walter would say, as Jerry would say, we had probably, not probably, but statistics show that we had more people watching here than The Voice, American Idol, and The Five all at once. Well, that, so, that, must, that must have been because your co-host was Bill Sell running the controls because if it was up to you to control the show and get everything going, you would have been down the bottom of the ratings pile. Exactly, exactly. Spoken by a person who just forgot to hit. Uh... It, said, it was right there. It said, go live, and I just kept <laughs> looking at it. I forgot that you're supposed to press that button. I know. I know. Go live. I know. Well, you, you know, know what? what? I, I was on business for a week in Las Vegas at the RBDA National Convention, uh, most important meeting of the year for dealers nationwide. Great networking event, great education, seminars, a lot of new exhibitors, services, products and services for the dealers. And our good friend Chris Andrew, uh, that was his last, last night of being chair of the uh, RBDA Board of Directors, so he can go back to being He'll stay on the uh, as past chairman, but he'll have more time to spend as the GM of Hemlock Hill RV. And we want to thank Chris for representing New England and, and the RV industry so well during during the pandemic year. He he had the year of years. When you figure it out um, between Jeff Hirsch and Chris, that's two national presidents in uh, within a what a six or eight year period. That's that speaks well of the industry in New England when they get to the top of the heap with the, um, you know, with their peers. Yep. And the last, we've only had three, Jeff and Chris, and we had Jack Moran back in 1986 and 1987. And Jack was the founder of Arlington RV Supercenter down in Rhode Island that Jim Taro and Jay Moran now run. Yep. Family business, 70, I think this is their 73rd year now in business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and it's gonna it's their is their seventy third, but they're gonna have their fiftieth anniversary coming up real soon. <laughs> they're, they're a little bit behind on that. So Hawes, right. we see, we hope Don is well. I think that we saw that Don. It, I think it was Don that that took sick last week, and um, you know he's back, and um, we're happy for that. But we should tell people that we have a great show lined up. And uh, I know most of the people tune in to see me once a week. We throw you in at no extra cost, but we've got a great guest tonight. Bob, why don't you tell our audience who we're going to be speaking with? And see, how, see how easy it is? See, when, when you run the controls, John, it's, it's real easy to just make you disappear. So you, right. should, you should really be, <laughs> you should exactly. really, really be more respectful yeah. of the person that presses a button. I may have forgot to press the button at the beginning, but see, I'm, I'm getting back into my game now. I just figured out how to just get you off the screen altogether. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's, but, let's, we've got a great guest. Yeah, bring up, introduce our guest. We'll bring her up and we'll run through some comments. Go ahead. See, um, I just asked you to bring her up, but that's all right. You you had amnesia. I'll, that's just, I'll, you, I'll bring, how about I bring her up and you in, you okay. introduce her? Yeah, because the mind is the second thing to go, Zagami. Oh, okay. So, with that being said, let us tell you that we have a phenomenal guest. I met her several years ago when she was right up here in New England and Vermont. Her name is Kim Travellino, and she founded an organization, which is a flourishing organization, called Full-Time Families. And Kim joins us tonight from North Carolina. And uh, Kim, you are a Jersey girl, so. I am, I am. So thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be up. 
That's great. Yeah, exactly. Great so you. you wrote a book and you started a movement. And let, let, let's go back to the movement here um, and ask you this. Um, in 2009 or 2010, you hit the road with your husband and three kids who were seven, six, and three. And you did something that was, it has turned into very commonplace today because of advances, advances in technology and the fact that COVID has changed the way people go to work. But tell us a little bit about, the, what, give us your background first, where you're from, what you did for work and your husband and, and all that other good stuff. And then our audience can uh, feel free audience as you do always, feel free to answer, ask our guest any questions. Okay, well, let me bring you back to 2007 when um, the epiphany of full-time families hit me. And that was a day I had uh, three little kids and it was the very first day of, have, of being a mom of three that Chris, my husband, took those three kids all at the same time. And so I was in my house having a nap and he took them. I didn't care where he took them, honestly. As long as you took them. Somewhere. <laughs> as long as you take them, I don't care. And he called me and he said, hey, I'm at an RV show and I'm going to buy a pop-up. And I said, well, what in the heck is a pop-up? And he said, oh, it's this really cool thing. And you do like this and you go camping in it. And I said, listen, again, I really don't care what you do. <laughs> Just keep them for a couple more hours and let me rest. And so he did. He brought home this pop-up. And uh, that just and, set and the, the whole the kids. thing in motion. He did bring the kids and, back yeah. too. He did. He brought the kids back too. The kids and the pop-up. Actually, the pop-up we had to order. We, we probably spent the most money someone could spend on a pop-up. So this was 07. And we spent $14,000 on that pop-up. We didn't know what we were doing. So we bought ourselves the most expensive pop-up you could get. And uh, when he brought, when that pop-up got delivered to my house, I stood in it and realized that everything I'd ever learned about being upwardly mobile and the traditional lifestyle was unnecessary, completely unnecessary. If you had a toilet, which this toilet happened to be in the shower, but we're not gonna get picky. If you had a toilet and a sink and some beds and a table, that you could live, you could just live in that. And you didn't, and I, so I looked at the pop-up and I looked at the house and I looked at the pop-up and I looked at the house and I ran out of that pop-up and I said, oh, we're going to live in an RV. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know people did it. I was just completely obsessed with it. And he said, we're not living in an RV. We're gonna go to Disney on the weekends every once in a while. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I said, you watch. Okay. <laughs> so. so Fast forward to how long it took you to, number one, convince your husband. Uh, my guess is that your husband took more convincing than the kids. Uh, yeah. But also, after you ask, answer that question, tell us about telling the relatives. Okay. So uh, it took three years to convince Chris. And at that point, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I had a small uh, alterations business. And I would stay home. Craigslist was kind of new. I would stay home while he went to work and I would sell all our belongings on Craigslist in preparation for when he would finally say yes. <laughs> he hadn't said yes was, at all. Was that, the, so, was, that the day, was that the day that he finally came home and there was nothing left in the house and he finally got the message that we're leaving? <laughs> it almost went down like that. It almost went down like that. There was another group of families. So in this three years, I had finally made connections with enough people who were living that full-time RV lifestyle that they were having a meetup in the Orlando area. And I convinced him to take us. And he took us. And as we were driving home, he said, From you where? know what? Where, where From, were you living? Um, Cape Canaveral. I was in Delray Beach oh. and the meetup was in Cape Canaveral. We were driving home from Cape Canaveral. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? We can actually do this. And I said, that's such good news because I sold the bed and they've been waiting for it for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was really driven. And, you know, thank God. Thank God he's so graceful with me because he, he did. So 
he said, okay, well, we'll do it. But at that point, we had like a 32 foot pull behind uh, travel trailer. He said, uh, we'll do it, but I don't want to do it in this. I want to do it in a fifth wheel. And so we got to get a truck. And then the clock started. That was January of um, 2010. And we pulled out May of 2010. We pulled out of the house May of 2010. But like you yeah. said, in the interim, I had to tell the relatives that we were going to do this crazy thing. And they were really unkind. <laughs> right. hold, hold, kind hold that of... thought. We'll just run through the uh, roster here so you get a good idea of who's there. Walt is here. Dante's here from Wyndham, Maine. Jerry's here from Cape Cod. Jerry is has been through the service um, inspection, and he does oh. inspections on RVs. Uh, Lisa's here. She's ready to buy her first one, unless she's done it since I've been away for a week or so. Jim Convoy with New England RV Roof. Don Hawes, who has, you must oh, have Don. known Don. Yeah, you must yeah. have known Don from your time at yeah. the National RV Training Academy. Mm -hmm. Frank, but Frank, that, Frank, that was an incredible nice. ceramic treatment that you put on your mobile, uh, yeah, I want to find out about that. Little Sweet's uh, luxury fifth wheel. That that thing looks stunning. Ryan Hadley's on. Ryan is an independent rep, uh, mobile rep up here in Massachusetts. And Tim's RV is one of our nerve to dealers. And let's see who else we got. Uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan was also in Las Vegas, but he only stayed for three days. But we had yeah. a fun time with him and his wife, Amy, and he received uh, the RV Pro 40 Under 40 Award and had a chance to grab a burger at the hotel with him and Amy. So he had a good time there. And uh, I don't see Gerber yet. Yes, John, go right ahead. Well, we got to figure something out here um, with Tim and um, Ryan. And Ryan with this hello, sweetheart stuff. Uh, yeah, they, they carry on their own conversation every week, you know? Yeah, but I'm starting to get a little concerned with, with that. <laughs> uh, you know, Lisa, did you see Lisa's comment here? Can you put Lisa's comment up there? I can. I'm glad you didn't sell that inspiring picture behind you. I see myself in it. Thank you. There you go. That's that's your your key to your RV, Lisa. So absolutely. Tell us tell us how you started. So you're out on the road. You got the family, and you were doing road schooling. Did you? start full-time families as soon as you hit the road or before you No, we road? actually started full-time families before we even hit the road so back when i when he pulled that pop up into the um driveway and i said we're gonna live in it i immediately ran to my desk and started every kind of google combination search to find other families living on the road full-time and this was 20 2007 and so the blogosphere wasn't really even a coherent thing yet. Nothing um, so like that. So I found all these, yeah, no. So I found all these disparate little websites that these families had, mm -hmm. and they had their own little handles. They were, you know, coast to coast trips and all sorts of different families. And I said, you know what? If I'm thinking about this right now, I bet there's other people thinking just as crazy as me thinking about this. And so what I want to do is I want to collect all this information into one place that you could find it and you can find it timely. So if it's Thanksgiving, I want a bunch of different ideas on how to have Thanksgiving in an RV. If it's Christmas, I want to know about that too. And so we started full-time families magazine while we still lived in the house. And I had all these writers that were on the road and I was just the editor putting it all together and, you know, deciding the direction of it each month. And, um, that's how Full Time Family started. It started as a magazine with, oh my gosh, I think it was a $7 a year subscription on, uh, on, uh, through PayPal. And um, then one day, after we were on the road, we were selling ad space in the magazine, for the magazine. And we were on the phone with Passport America. And they said, well, are you just a magazine or are you a club? And Chris went like this, are we just a magazine? And I said, oh no, we're a club. <laughs> and so from that moment on, we transferred all the subscribers to club members and full-time families, the club was born. And and at, at the peak, I know you sold it uh, a few years back and you're doing other things right now, but at the peak, how many members did you have in the club? Um, we sold it with just under 2,000 member families in it. And so 
we call everybody that's a part of it a member and the average number of family size is five on the road incredibly enough so, yeah, so there's 10, um, right that's pretty good i'm, I'm a math yeah. whiz <laughs> I, you did that really yeah. fast <laughs> so before we go any further um we started asking you about tell us what you were telling the relatives and then we segued off to to say hello to our studio audience um tell us what that was like because I'm guessing that some of the people thought, again, this is 13 years ago or 10 years, whatever it is, but a while ago, uh, they must have thought you were like a Charles Manson follower or something like that, because the only families that hit the road were were cults, were they not? Right. You know, it, it's interesting. That's one of the things that full-time families did was turn the perception around of what a full-time traveling family is. Because before we hit the road, it was people who didn't have a lot of options. There were small, there was a small faction of people who had options and chose that lifestyle. But the vast majority were people who lived in campers because they couldn't afford homes or their job required them to travel or something. So we, you know, there weren't a lot of what we call choosers back when we chose it. Um, and so my mother-in-law was really confused about why we would give up this beautiful house to go live in a trailer park. And I had to like set her straight and say, no, I'm not going to live in a trailer park. I'm going to live in a campground where people, you know, say, save for their whole year to go camping. I'm going to live there with all those amenities and we're going to travel the country um, you know, she was, she was hurt because it's the kids, it's the grandkids. And that's hard. It is really hard to leave your stationary traditional community. Um, in How to Hit the Road, the book that I wrote, uh, we talk a lot about preparing yourself mentally and preparing your family and your um, extended family for what this lifestyle change is going to look like and how it's going to impact everybody. And, you know, without the right expectations, you're not the, you're not laying a good foundation for yourself. Right. But it, in reality, you were a pioneer. You were like the Christopher Columbus of families. Um, you know, they all thought Columbus was nuts. They thought the people that said, let's go to the moon were nuts, um, et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at now of the number of families that now it's considered cool, not crazy, Right. Well, right. you have to remember in 2010, when we actually did hit the road, that was the um, downturn of the economy. And a lot yep. of people in my age group had, you know, invested a lot of time and energy into their careers and they were let go in the blink of an eye. And I think a lot of people had a paradigm shift at that moment. Like in, in what I am, what I'm trading is what I'm trading my life for and my time with my family for really worth it. And so there were a group of us that were like, you know what? We're going to grab life with our families right now. We're not going right to wait. Now. Smart move. Oh, Smart move. Kimberly, when you, when you and Chris decided to do this, at what point did you bring the kids? Because at that time they were three, six, and seven, and one on the way, right? How, uh, yeah. When did you bring them into the conversation, and how did they receive it? Right away, you know, the, the oldest being seven, he was pretty enthusiastic about anything and everything. We're going to the movies. Awesome. We're going to live on, in a camper. Fantastic. <laughs> There's not a lot of discernment happening when you're seven. So uh, he was really excited. And the six-year-old, um, you know, he was also excited. The three-year-old was completely oblivious. So it was a good time to go. And it was a lot of fun to be able to have that time with them. Life on the road should be less busy than your traditional life. If it's as busy or busier than your traditional life, then you're doing it wrong. Honestly, mm -hmm. it should be a slower pace. And being able to like experience life with them and taking the time to see what, what we were experiencing together through their eyes was just one of the most pr prized things of our ex adventures together. Right. And you know what? Nobody can take that away from you. No. It's be there, be there you, forever. You've got, so we should tell people up front, um, Bob put that tiny URL up there, but um, there, uh, unless you've got a pen and pencil and, a, and an excellent memory, if you just go to Amazon uh, and hit how to, how to hit the road, you'll be able to. Hitting, 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 hitting the road. Yeah. 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 Something I'll, like I'll, that. I'll post, I'll post it in the other column uh, also for you. 
Okay. Uh, Walter's, and, got, Walter's got a question or a comment. Walter's got a good question. Seniors have challenges with getting the right health coverage. How did you tackle that challenge with a family? Good question, Walter. That is a good question, Walter. And that is like why full-time families existed because we had questions like this that we needed to answer for, and if I needed to answer it individually, then if I could answer it for a whole group and save everybody all the time of doing all the legwork, then we could all benefit. And so one of the ways that we accomplished the healthcare question was, well, first of all, I've been self-insured. We have been self-insured since we made that leap into 2010. Um, you know, praise God, we've never had any significant health issues, but that's how we handle self-insurement. But um, one of the supplements that we did was we created, we found it, we found this organization that does telehealth. And so for $16 a month, um, my family has a telehealth contract and they can um, get unlimited doctor's appointments over the phone or through the internet. And um, that doctor can write prescriptions anywhere we are. And so that really supplemented our healthcare. And so when we found that solution, we brought that solution to the club and we made that available to everyone in the club. So then the rates went even cheaper because it, now we got a group rate. And that's how the, you know, what, whatever we did to solve our problems, we extended to the club. And then as other people were coming up with problems and solutions, we incorporated that into the club so that we had you know, solutions for road schooling and finding employment and finding health care and finding braces on the road, you know, all these challenges that families face, you know, we didn't have to be a man on, you know, an island onto ourselves. We could do it organically together. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you just, Lisa, huh? if you just joined us, I just want to let you know that, uh, I'm John DiPietro. The other guy is Bob Zagami. Our guest is Kim, Kimberly. Good, Trump, good, you know. good. The good looking guys, Bob Zagami. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one with the glare. Um, but what it all boils down to is you are watching RVing in New England, and we have a great show today. And we always want to ask you to hit the share button once this goes, um, uh, you know, here on Facebook. Share it with other people because Kim is going over content that is very, very useful. And here's one thing you need to realize. There are a lot of, there's a lot of content out there on the internet that is created by people that ain't never done what they're telling you to do. And when you talk about something as serious as hitting the road, you know, giving up the sticks and bricks for a period of time. And also Kim and I'm, I'm Kimberly, I, I know you'll get into it. It doesn't have to be for the rest of your life. It can be a short period of time. It can be a longer period of time. Some people start out, start out and say, um, you know what, I'm going to try it for a period of time and then decide they want to do it for much, much longer. So um, take the time to share this content because there is a much larger audience than the people that are watching it live. So share it. We appreciate it. And the people that will get the content that Kimberly's talking about will yep. appreciate it Question. as well. Question from Lisa. Can question. you read that, Kimberly, or do you want me to read it? I can. I can. And it's a great question because a lot of times when people think about full-time RVing, they think about, you know, the travel blogs and the YouTube videos and all the glamour and the, uh, the amazing adventures you have. And, and there's a lot of hardships that go along with transitioning. First of all, there's a great risk because especially in 2010 when we did it, you know, nobody was doing it. So if we screwed it up, we only have ourselves to blame. Um, but uh, one of the great hardships, honestly, uh, which we'll talk about later is how it came in full circle, was repairs. RVs are not meant to be lived in. Definitely <laughs> not by a family of six. Uh, they cannot withstand the wear and tear of moving as much as ours did. And so just constant us. repairs. Mr. Gerber has was, arrived. Greg Gerber. He knows more than anybody else about the quality of workmanship of, <laughs> of RVs. It, 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 so. in, 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 in typical Gerber fashion, he writes half a story. Uh, I remember my first encounter with full-time family members. It was in Montrose, Colorado. As soon as the event was over, several families were headed to the gold country 
to speak with geologists about how mountains are formed, how minerals get into the veins, and now the ore, how the ore is extracted. Then they were going to pan for gold in the original creek where the gold rush began. Wow. The children were the smartest, most polite, most conversational youngsters I had ever met. It made me a fan of road schooling. He, well, he, he must be president of your fan club because we all know Greg. Greg's a, a wonderful guy. And as I mentioned at the uh, top of the show, I had a chance to have dinner with him out in Las Vegas last week. Texas Roadhouse? Huh? No, Texas. we didn't. We didn't go to the Texas Roadhouse. We went to a uh, Brazilian steakhouse. With, uh, they, they cut the, wow, cut they the off the uh, bone. And I'll tell you, this this place. I told Don't you, Las Vegas, Vegas is back. This place Don, was packed. Bob, Bob, Dawn Polk is with us. Don't make her feel bad. Oh, wait, where is she? She's here somewhere. Did, she's, where she's, is she? here. she's eating. She's eating onions and carrots somewhere. Hi, Dawn. Yep, she got here at oh, seven. Dawn, Dawn, Dawn Polk. Dawn. So, Don, we went to this Brazilian steakhouse, and the waiters, oh, cool. waitresses came by with these big stacks of lamb and steak and chicken and pork, and they shaved that onto our. Uh, I'll stop torturing her. Don, Don's, a, Don's a vegan, Kimberly, so we like to. Uh, but, but next time we could take <laughs> Mark, we could just leave Don out in the parking lot. We can take Mark with us. Right, right. Nice. Hi. So um, talk about your meeting. Let, let me follow up with what Gerber said, because when I met you in um, Vermont, one of the things that I noticed, and, and you guys had, I don't know, several people there at, at an escapees event, but I noticed how the kids all got along with each other. That was, and again, that was five, six years ago. But I remember saying how well adjusted these kids are. And when you analyze it, the fact that just what, what Greg had said, you can read about mining for or what the 49ers did in an outdated school textbook. Okay. But when you do it, it's so totally different. And so many kids today, you know, are they learn by doing or they do by learning. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm that's got to be an aspect of it that that maybe you want to talk about what your kids got out of this whole experience well first and foremost my kids got empathy out of the experience because they interacted with so many different people across so many different spectrums lifestyles age groups and uh, they just have a really well-rounded idea on how to have relationships with people because they weren't just, you know, put in a room with 18 other kids their age and, you know, moved from year to year in that same spectrum. They, they just interacted with adults and um, older adults and younger kids. And like you said, John, when I met you, there was um, kids age, you know, zero to 14, 15 all playing together. Yeah. at that escapade and that's just how they were raised they were just raised not to see those um you know uh fake borders around their life about you know you got to play with people your age and you well, know they, just they didn't, not they talk didn't, to adults they didn't grow up in front of computers and smartphones 12 14 hours a day yeah that's true yeah, well they didn't exist um, then either <laughs> no it didn't where we, they, no where they we didn't now. have i I think I told you, we didn't have that kind of bandwidth. We, when we first started, we only had, you know, not even a gig a month that we had to share and we had to produce a magazine. So I, you know, I had to use right. it all to produce yeah. a magazine. I, most of the magazines came out of McDonald's across the country. So, <laughs> um, so, and, and road schooling is a very enriching way to, to teach people it's very it's highly eclectic it's you know based on your experience your where you are in the world and what you can get out of where you're at um so they've been on you know civil war battlefields and they've been where lewis and clark uh first touched the pacific and you know it really makes learning come to life for real yeah. Frank, frank's got a frank's got a follow-up question on the health coverage kimberly if you could address that yeah, so uh, for people who don't comprehend self-insured, well, that's a nice way of saying not insured. 
or uninsured. <laughs> or when I go to the doctor, no, that's say, a, I, a I nice way of saying, so. <laughs> please, Lord, please stay healthy. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's a yeah. euphemism for no insurance. But you know what we do? We 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 learned how to negotiate with healthcare providers when we needed to um, have when we had you know we had kids, so we had broken bones and uh, you know health emergencies that happened, and so we just had to learn how to navigate that system uh, and stay ahead of it, have a little bit of a health savings account for ourselves, and um, some essential oils, the RV, you know, whatever. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Bob Walter put up that that note about great Brazilian steakhouse. I don't care what steakhouse you go to, the best one ever, and I've been to them all over the country, is in Hyannis called Brazilian Grill. And um, it's the same thing where they take the meat out on the skewers. But anyway, I think the Boston ones are chains. I'm not sure. But Brazilian Grill, it's there's one in Boston and one in Plymouth, I think. But if you like Brazilian food and um, just be prepared to be carried out of there on a stretcher if you yeah. overeat. Hey, I, I, I got to do a commercial a commercial for us. We don't have a sponsor, but uh, some of you may have noticed today we launched our sneak peeks for the 2022 Boston RV and Camping Expo. So every day now we're going to be posting sneak peeks about the exhibitors, about our dealers, about the new products, about new services, about the seminars. We're expanding the education program this year. We'll have a technical track. We'll have a lifestyle track. We'll have all your favorite nerve to dealers there. January we'll have a railroad track too. January 14 to 17. Uh, <laughs> railroad track. Right. <laughs> so keep watch, watching for those. And do us a favor, John said before, sometimes we forget to ask you to share this stuff. But when you get these sneak peeks every day, send them out to five or ten of your friends. Send them out to your camping group and get them, get them on our mailing list so that they can get them every day. And because uh, we expect record record breaking attendance come January in Boston. Hey Bob, um, speaking of record breaking attendance on, on this show, like we broke records last week, but we're okay now. That people are starting to come back again. Um, Don Hawes is joining us from a hospital bed. Yeah, he had something. Where, where, uh, did he, He's did in he... Texas somewhere. And he said, I'm still in the hospital. I don't know. He had some kind of on a bypass or, or something. But um, I give him credit. And uh, Don, I just don't want, because this show is so cool, I don't want you to get palpitations or, um, you know, have that blood pressure monitor go off if they got a cuff on you. Because Kim has such great information. But you... Give no, this, anyway, this, right? this show is so good, it'll actually speed up his recovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We won't talk about bedpans or anything else because that's that's bad. But um let let's go let's go one step further. Um right now you're off the road. And you know what? Let's talk about it right now. Why you're off the road and talk about a little bit about that picture behind you and, and what took you off the road because I think RVers are a, um, they're a cross section of America. They're a cross section of religions. They're a cross section of political parties, et cetera, et cetera. But somebody took the wheel. Absolutely. That's absolutely what happened in 2017. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this in the, in our pre-show, uh, we had like a, a divine intervention happened and uh, Jesus said, it's time, it's time to uh, settle down. And, uh, and actually was the, that was the evidence for us selling full-time families. Um, we didn't think we could even sell it because it was such a, you know, hazy idea. It's a community. How do you sell a community? You know, you've got a couple of broken crayons and some ping pong, ball, ping pong balls. You host events all over the country um you've got a couple books and a couple radio shows and it, it just doesn't make sense how you could sell it but it sold and um and we did we uh the one of the first calls we made was uh to terry down in texas and we said okay we're we're selling full-time families and uh, we need to do something else and chris feels like he really wants to go into rv repair and terry said well i'm building a schoolhouse Come on down to Texas. And that was the next thing we did. We 
Yeah, we froze up. Yeah, that's what we did. Froze up there. We froze up there. Uh, that was the next thing we did. Yeah. But um, now, now go back to I'll reverse the question I asked you earlier. Now, when it came time to come off the road, the kids, well, the kids are now 18, 17, 14, and 11. But how did you address it with the kids? They probably kind of liked seeing the country, learning history, learning life uh, from different, many perspectives. How did you approach it and how did they take it? There you go. There's this one of the one that was. This is the one. This is DJ. He can't hear you because I have my headphones in. But this is the one that was born on the road. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, DJ. He's only ever lived. Oh, he's only ever lived in a house for 18 months. Um, how did they? So my daughter was so ready. She was ready to, you know, participate in things like cheerleading and have long-term friends that she could see regularly. My 18-year-old, he could have probably gone for another 10 years. My 17-year-old is um, a railroad, a toy train fanatic. And having a layout in an RV is ab almost impossible. <laughs> so uh, I, he, I, he I, a long I think time. so. Even, even an N, uh, you know, a type N an layout NPL. isn't yep. going to fit in an RV. It's it's so funny you say that because just yesterday, for the first time in our 11 years with RVing, Chris sent us a picture of an N-scale RV, uh, N-scale train layout in a fifth wheel, right in the living room. <laughs> wow. Good. Yeah. Funny. Funny. yeah. It's funny. So can the little guy so talk? Can he, can he, yeah, can can he tell us in his own words how he liked the yeah, road? Did you like it? Oh. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he, he's in talk? school now. This is his first year of school. So, what did you like better, road schooling or going to school every day? <laughs> Why going to school? Why? Because I don't have to wake up really early. Yeah, he misses road schooling. He's like, right. what was the one place that he visited that he'll remember forever while he was on the road? Probably a big place called Rock City. City of Rocks. City of Rocks. Yeah, New Mexico. Uh, City of Rocks. How old were you? I don't remember. <laughs> were you? What? Well, we went multiple times. Okay. And what was what was so popular about City of Rocks? Um, I liked it, it, it because I. Could just climb rocks and it was fun to do. Great. So, so do, you, do you have friends from all over the country? Um, kind of, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Would you ever want to go back into the RV again? Live in the RV? Maybe for like a vacation. Just a vacation, not a whole life, huh? No. I, that, 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 that brings up a good point, though. Are you, is the family still vacationing in an RV, or do you still have an RV? So you're not giving up RV? No. No. Okay. Yeah, RVing is in, is in my blood. It's like people who have pets, which we have pets also. If you are a pet person, you will have a pet for the rest of your life. We will have an RV for the rest of our life. In fact, multiple RVs. We collect RVs. <laughs> And if, you have kids, really like have, them. and if you have kids, you'll have kids for the rest of your life. Yeah, true story. Yeah. Even yeah. when they're adults. So well, basically, when we, when we were talking to Kimberly before the show, she said it was four kids, four dogs, and 360 square feet. Right? Yeah. That, that's how you launched yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. Audience, now's the time to ask the, uh, the people who've done it any questions that you might have. Um, they've just got a phenomenal story to tell. Bob, you want to put the book back up again because there might be some people there that... Uh, How to you hit the road, making your family's full-time RV dreams a reality, available on Amazon, right here. Cool. We'll, we'll add what, that I, what I really want to, people to know who are interested in this lifestyle is that there is a safety net out there. The full-time families community is 
as vibrant and growing as it ever has been. And they do so many wonderful activities for every member of your family. They have special activities and um, options for moms and for dads and for children and for families. There's a million Facebook groups. Um, we launched, before we sold it, we launched something called Branches. So that, um, cause as the organization, organization grew, we wanted people to still have those intimate connections. And so we have branches for, uh, secular RVs and YouTubers and, uh, you know, there's the uh, smaller niche groups that are in the community. Uh, the community so has its own scouting program called the explorers program where the kids earn badges. Um, there's a faith-based branch on the road where they do all sorts of, um, service projects together. You know, I just can't express it enough. If you are a family that is looking to travel and this community will be like none other you've ever been a part of, even if you live on the coolest block in America, this community is so welcoming and so vibrant is really the best way to describe it. There's yeah. just something for everyone there. So a question from Gerber. Gerber's got another question there, Kimberly, for you. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. What a great timing. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a certain amount of finesse and uh and timing is you know, and you really want your children to be as exhausted as possible, you know, and that kind of thing. <laughs> That's as much as I can say. Yeah. <laughs> better, better, better boy, Gerber. <laughs> so diamond tap and uh, children's Tylenol, that kind of stuff, knock them out a little bit. Right. In, yeah, in, right. in the organization, um, did you encounter many um, single parent families or was it mostly the yes. intact family? Yes. In fact, there um, we established a branch for solo parents on the road and we hosted an event specifically just for them. Um, and they're uh, very unfortunately at our at towards the end of our time on the road, there seemed to be a rash of widows with fam with children on the road. Either they started out as a as an organic family or they left as a widow, but we also had, you know, a support group specifically for widows on the road. Um, the, God bless those single parents on the road because it's, it's very, so someone asked, I think it was Lisa asked before about the challenges. It's very, it's a challenging, rigorous lifestyle. If you've ever gone camping for a week, you know that it can be slightly exhausting. Um, and having two parents is really helpful. Like for when one's fixing the RV again, <laughs> So that the kids can be Again. distracted or taken care of or fed, you know, it's, it's not easy. So God bless those single parents, but there is, there is a good number of them. Well, look at, let's talk about a little bit about uh, your husband's business, which you're, you're intimately involved with him now also. Uh, Bob, 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 that's not the right word to use. Intimately. Gerber just, Ger, Gerber just brought that up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Kim, Kim and I get it. Bob doesn't get it. I get it. You're, 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 I, and I've got a great answer for you, but it's not good for a family show, so I, I'll reserve it. I won't. I won't. I won't say it. All right. Uh, but, we're going to uh, lose our PG rating. Great. So tell tell us about the next chapter of your life and where you are now and how you got uh, engaged in servicing mobile uh, mobile RV repair. Okay, well, um, so one of the challenges, like I mentioned, was that the RV is constantly breaking. There's my husband and my son um, in their travel tech RV shirts. Um, so uh, Greg, uh, Chris really had to come up to speed on how to fix things. And uh, I think I mentioned that we hosted these events. And what I noticed happening was people were coming to the events with their RVs broken on purpose, like not getting them fixed elsewhere because they knew that Chris was capable of fixing them. And so what we saw was this opportunity for full-time RVers to get their repairs done in a way that's convenient for them. 
uh, you know, that that's not very pervasive in the country. If you are a full-time RVer and you need your RV repaired, chances are good you're going to have to drop it off and live in a hotel for a little while. And yeah. you might have kids and dogs like me, and that's really inconvenient. So we wanted to establish a place where full-time RVers could come, stay on the property, get their RV fixed, and or uh, we also do custom solar installs. So get their solar installed and be a part of the process if they so choose. So you and you're in North Carolina now, right? We are. We are right where North Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee meet in the western corner of North Carolina in a little town, mountain town called Murphy. It, it, right at the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Smoky Mountains. And uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here. We have a big old piece of property right on the highway with really, really easy access. So you can just drive right on over. We're on the way. If you're coming, if you're coming from the West and you're heading to Florida, you'll probably pass us. <laughs> so if you wanted to swing in and get whatever you needed repaired, so that's so what need, we'd love to do. And, and it's TravelTechRV.com, right? Yes, that's what it is. All right, travel tech RV. It's interesting. Now, um, does he specialize in the electrical systems or all systems? Because I think I read I, re I read on his uh, podcast that he attended all five weeks of this the uh, National RV Training Academy schools. Yes, he did. Um, that really helped to for him to develop some very efficient ways to do repairs. Like, you know, he could repair mostly everything, but he couldn't do it in a timely manner uh, previous to attending Terry's um, program. So Terry's programs really helped him hone his skills so that he can, you know, get turn things around. He specializes in all the living spaces and the um, living parts of the RV. So coming from the awning into all the appliances, slides, leveling. We do not do anything with engines, brakes, wheels. We don't handle that. That's a mechanic. Um, we handle all the living attributes of an RV. Interesting. And the house um, side. Yeah, the house side. The house side. The house side. Okay. Yeah. So what, what recommendations for people who have seen you tonight they're thinking about it. What, what suggestions do you have for them in their planning process, regardless of where they are yeah. right now? What are your kind of your top three tips for them if they're going to be successful at doing what you and the family have done? Okay. Tip number one. And even though, you know, for the way that we live in our culture right now, this might sound absolutely crazy. Tip number one is be debt free. Be a hundred percent debt free. If you want to, be really free and you want to live the full-time lifestyle, don't do it paying off old debts for stuff you don't even own anymore. Buy your RV for cash. Buy your vehicle that you're going to tow it with or if you're going to buy a motorhome or you're towed for cash. Even if it's not on your number one list, buy that for cash so you can be free because you know what? There's a lot of variables in the full-time RV lifestyle and you don't want to have to be depended on to pay all that past debt. So that's my number one tip, be debt free. And it is not impossible. Uh, it is one of the things that we started working on in 2007. Um, we were not debt free until we launched. And then we did own all our own equipment and it made a world of difference. Um, uh, follow some, uh, some YouTubers that you find on, uh, follow some YouTubers who, you know, really tell you the full story. If, if every video they show you is just absolutely glamorized and edited, uh, you know, that might be entertaining, but that's not what the real life is. Look for those, those people who are sharing their real life with you so that you can have real expectations. Um, and expect, tip number three, is expect to mourn your own lifestyle. Because your traditional lifestyle, it might not be exactly what you want, but it's comfortable and you know how to live it. And the full-time lifestyle is so very different from your traditional lifestyle. So there's going to be so many challenges. Expect to mourn for a little while your old lifestyle. Interesting. Very interesting. Because uh, it's, it's, it's a shock to the whole system 
to just launch it. it and, That's and be such out a there. good way to say it. How yeah. long? How long has the book been out? Oh, the book's been out since 2010. But okay, I think so- that I revised it. I think I revised it twice. I think the the version that's there is like a 2015 version. So do you have any graduates, alumni of the book that have said, uh, hey, I read the book and thank goodness I got, uh, thank goodness I did because without it, I wouldn't have been able to do it? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, at one point, uh, we were doing mentoring for full-time families because of the book. People read the book. And then they wanted more information. And so we launched a mentoring program. Um, and uh, we have a lot of people who waited for a rally to launch um, so that they could be supported by the community immediately coming out onto the road. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I think it's important to keep in, keep in mind, and I haven't checked the book out, so I don't know if you said it there, but... Um, you don't want to get paralysis from analysis. You might not have everything 100% correct, but would you say if you're comfortable, do it? Yeah, I would say if it if it is something that is stirring in your mind right now, then I would start making real steps towards doing it. And And the book really does lay out step by step. It's how I think I'm a very methodical person Um, And so I just went back and I reviewed the steps that laid the foundation for us being able to launch. Uh, And so just work the steps, just every day, do a little something. I I think I told you in the beginning of the show, every day I was selling our items on (laughs) Craigslist. Do a little something to move yourself in the right direction every day. And then what the, the the biggest thing that it says in the book, and I also have a companion workbook called the Journey Journal, And the very thing that I ask you to declare is the date you're going to launch. So, you know, like how people, if you're not, you're not engaged without a ring and a date, you're not engaged without a ring and a date. So engage yourself in this and set your launch date and work towards it. Yeah, that's so true. Let me ask one final question. And I know Bob's got a couple more and we may have some from our audience here, but at any time during the time when you were on the road or the time since you've been off the road, have you ever said to your husband or your husband said to you or you said to your kids or your kids said to you or the kids said to each other, I wish we never did that damn RV thing? No, never, never once. It was the most amazing, blessed time of our lives. Uh, you know, it's, it, it was such a gift to be given those years. Uh, never once did we ever regret doing it now there were times when we were on on the side of the road asking are we supposed to be doing this because we were broken for the 85th thousandth time (laughs) but you know once we got fixed and and back up running there was never a question it it, you know i really can't express enough if this is something you want to do then start working a plan to do it did you did you ever and i i know i said the last one was my last question but i just thought of this did you in your, in your organization, in your group, did you ever come across any um, grandparents that were traveling with grandkids? Absolutely. Absolutely. There were grandparents on the road um, and a lot of adopted families on the road, families with adopted children, like quite a phenomenon. I would say 25% of, of the people were adopted families. I wondered if they were living that lifestyle to kind of insulate and be able to bond that's interesting of course they didn't have to worry about couple time as as gerber mentioned see frank frank got a very astute statement there he says great benefit to full timing is if you don't like your neighbors it is easy to move which would be great if you would live next door to john DePedro. (laughs) (laughs) you you cannot win DePedro. Oh, I, I want to find out who put that ceramic thing. Uh, Frank, I, I want to, I'll write to you after. I want to find out about that coating. Uh, oh, okay. So, so now, 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 Gerber. I get it now. Back. You're like a politician, <laughs> Gerber. You make a statement and all of a sudden you have to come out and uh, re- start to retract it. You know? Yes. Yeah, right. Date nights. But- yes. So we were able to, um, we, because we had community, we were able to share babysitting duties for date nights. 
All right, you happy? You happy now, Gerber? You got that figured out? All right, I <laughs> guess tonight has been Kimberly Travellino and Kimberly. Thank you very much. I, I told you the hour would go by very quickly, but a lot of uh, great statements and a lot of great advice for people that are thinking about uh, becoming full timers because more and more and more are doing it. More and more, more, and more are doing homeschooling. It's it's a trend. You were a trailblazer ahead of your time, but. Uh, They've got your advice and guidance, and they've got your book to uh, plan their journey uh, their way. Well, Any thank you so much for having me, and I really do hope people are inspired to take that great big leap of faith. I hope so. Any closing statements, Mr. DePietro, before you go get your can of Chef Boyardee SpaghettiOs for supper? <laughs> a great a great guest. I'm trying to figure I think I already did. Oh, I had leftovers. That's right. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. You know, I had a half a half a can left from yesterday. Oh, good. But, um, you know what? I, when I was driving back from the Cape today, I said we're going to have a great show today, and um, I think we did. I think we did. All right, going to hit up with the closing video, and then we're going to say good night, and we'll see everybody down the road. Not nice next week, but, but not next week. Not next week. That's right. We're going to take next week off because it's Thanksgiving. So everybody enjoy cooking the turkey and all your dressing and stuff the night before. Have a great Thanksgiving. See you in two weeks. All right. Bye. Thank you. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.